Good day and welcome to video 51. And today we will be starting off trigonometry. Now trigonometry only deals with one basic shape, the triangle. Now there are many different types of triangles out there. I'll just call a few um, right angle triangles, isosceles triangles, um, scaling triangles, acute angle triangles, just to name a few. Now, when I am teaching trigonometry, I'm going to divide triangles into two groups. Right angle triangles and non-right angle triangles. When you're learning trigonometry, you're going to realize right angle triangles, and it's really easy to, to spot a right angle triangle. It has to go 90 degrees in it. Right? You're going to realize right angle triangles have their own set of formulas. And every other type of triangle, the non-right angle triangles, have different types of formulas. So I'm going to split it into two, and I'm going to teach right angle triangles first. Which means every single question that I'm going to do today will have the 90 degrees or the little box in it. There are quite a few things you need to know about right angle triangles, but I'm going to start off with our first theorem, or first equation, type of equation. That's Pythagoras theorem. You may have heard of it in school already. So, what is Pythagoras theorem? First of all, Pythagoras theorem only deals with right angle triangles, and the examiner has to give you the length of two sides, and your job is to find the missing side. Now, in the corners here, you will see two formulas a pink one and a blue one. Both of them are Pythagoras theorem, and you notice the formulas look slightly different. This one has an addition sign underneath the square root, and this one has a minus sign underneath the square root. And you'll see the letter H in both of them. The letter H stands for the hypotenuse. What is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is the longest side of a right angle triangle. Now, there are more than one ways to spot the hypotenuse. For example, in this question, this here is the hypotenuse because this is the longest side of a right angle triangle. However, I do not choose that way to pinpoint who is the hypotenuse. The better way to pinpoint the hypotenuse is to look for the right angle and then look for the side opposite the right angle. So if this is my right angle, the side opposite my right angle is this guy. So this is my hypotenuse. Now in both formulas, you'll see the letters RS. RS just stands for regular side. Meaning that in a right angle triangle, I always consider the hypotenuse to be very important. It's the most spectacular part of a right angle triangle, the hypotenuse. And the two other sides, I just refer to them as regular sides. They are not as important as the hypotenuse. So, all right angle triangles will have one hypotenuse and two other sides, which I just call regular sides. Now, when you're using Pythagoras theorem, remember, you're trying to find a missing side, but the examiner has to give you the length of at least how much side. Well, he has to give the length of exactly two sides. If you are trying to find the length of the hypotenuse, you use the blue, sorry, the pink formula. If you are trying to find the length of a regular side, you use the blue formula. And I'm going to show you three, well, hopefully I'll have time to do more than three examples here to show you when to use the pink one and when to use the blue one. But a few other things before I jump into that. First of all, whenever you have any triangle in the world, you will notice that the examiner will put capital letters to the corners. Capital letters represent angles and corners, where well, the angles are any corner. So this is angle A, angle C, and angle B. Angle B is my right angle or my 90 degrees. You are only allowed to use capital letters for the corners. So what about the sides? The name of this side will be named common B. Why? Because it's opposite angle B. So the name of this side is common B. When you are naming sides, you're only allowed to use common letters. You cannot use capital letters. What's the name of this side? Here's angle A. 
So here will be common A because this side is opposite angle A. And of course, I guess you figured out by now, this side is common C because it's opposite capital C. Right. In this question, let's identify who is the hypotenuse. Well, remember I said the side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. So I'm just going to put that H here to remind myself, hey, this side is the hypotenuse. The two other sides are just regular sides. So, common A is RS or a regular side, and here A to B is also a regular side. So, let's try to figure out what we are trying to find in this question. Well, we are trying to find the length of this side because they gave us a length of two sides, and the only side that is missing is the hypotenuse. So if we are trying to find the length of the hypotenuse, we have to use the pink formula. So the pink formula, I know I have it up there, but I'm going to write it. But hypotenuse is equal to the square root of regular side plus the other regular side square. Now in the exam, you cannot write this. This is something I came up with, right? Now, the reason I came up with this is because this is easier to understand. In the exam, you are trying to find the length of the hypotenuse. Now, the hypotenuse has a particular name, and the regular sides have a particular name. Anytime you're trying to find the hypotenuse, you have to use the one with the positive sign. And you notice there's a big square root sign here. Keep in mind, you always press the square root sign last. Now, I'm telling it, I'm going to say it over and over and over until it becomes really annoying because it's really important. Because students will see a big square root sign here and they will press the square root sign first on their calculator, thinking that's the right thing to do. It's wrong. You press the square root sign last. So, let me show you what to actually write in the exam to get full marks. First of all, we are trying to find the length of the hypotenuse. What's the length? What's the name of the hypotenuse? Isn't this the hypotenuse? Doesn't he have an official name? His name is common B. Square root. What are the length of the two other sides? Well, what are the name of the other sides? The other regular sides. Isn't he a regular side? It doesn't matter who you look at first. Like you look at the 12 first or the 16. Doesn't matter. Let's look at him first. What's the name of the first regular side? His name is common A. So you put A squared. Plus, what's the name of the other regular side? C. So you put C squared. So this is the formula you need to write in the exam. Now it's time to work it out. Let's substitute in our values. Remember, we are trying to find B. Common A is 12. So we put 12 squared plus 16 squared because common C is 16. And all we have to do is work this out on our, on our calculator. Be careful. We're going to work out this piece first, 12 squared plus 16 squared. And after you get your answer, then square it in. So let's work it out together. 12 squared plus 16 squared. When I work out 12 squared plus 16 squared, I get 400. What do I need to do with that answer now? I need to square root it. So I'm going to square root 400. And my answer is 20. And that's my final answer. The length of this side is 20 meters. Right. Let's do another example. Right. This could take a little while to get a handle. This question, question two. We're going to try to find the length of this side. First of all, it's a right angle triangle. And the examiner gave me the length of two sides. And he wants me to find a missing side. So that's clear grounds to use Pythagoras theorem. To use Pythagoras theorem, it must be a right angle triangle. It is a right angle triangle. They have to give us the length of two sides. We have the length of two sides, and they want us to find a missing side. So let's figure out who is the hypotenuse and who are the regular sides. But well, we should put in our common letters first. If here is capital P, then the side opposite will be common P. If here is capital R, this side is common R. If he has capital Q, over here is common Q. So it seems they want us to find the length of common Q. But let's figure out who's the hypotenuse. 
Here, we have the right angle and the side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. So we have the length of the hypotenuse. Once you figure out who is the hypotenuse, the other two sides are just regular sides. Because the hypotenuse is the star of the show. He is the most important. So once you figure out who is the hypotenuse, the other two sides are just regular sides. So what's the aim of this question? Do they want us to find the length of the hypotenuse? Or do they want us to find the length of a regular side? It seems to me that the question mark is here, and they want us to find the length of a regular side. So which formula do we use? Pink one or the blue one? The blue one is to find the length of a regular side, and that's the one with the minus sign. The hypotenuse, whenever you try to find the hypotenuse, that's the one with the addition sign. If you want to find the length of a regular side, you use the one with the minus sign. So let me write back this formula here. Regular side is equal to the square root. Now, when you're using that formula, the hypotenuse must come first underneath the square root. Do not put the regular side first here. Minus regular side squared. So, we want to find the length of the regular side. What's the name of the regular side? Q. Big square root sign. The name of our hypotenuse today is common P. Minus. And the other regular side is common R. That's this guy. This is what you need to write in the exam for the example. And then you substitute in the values. Common Q is equal to how much is the size of common P? Common P is 28. So it's 28 squared minus, and how much is R? 14. Remember, when we use any one of these formulas, you press the square root sign last. So, 28 squared minus 14 squared. You should see 588 appear on your calculator. When we work this out, what do we need to do last? Square root it. So, let's square root 588. And the answer we will get today for the length of this side, if we round it off to two decimal places, is 24.25. Well, it was actually 24.248, but I'm rounding off to two decimal places. So since this is five or more, I have to add one to the four to get five. So that's the length of this side. So to go through this again, when you want to find the hypotenuse, you use the red formula. Thing formula, sorry, the one with the addition side. If you want to find a regular, normal, boring side, who is not the hypotenuse, you use the blue one with the minus sign. So take a look at number three. Which one do you think we will use? It's a right angle triangle. We have the length of two sides, and this side is missing. Which one do you think it would be? Red one, sorry, pink one, or blue one? Let's see. Here is the hypotenuse because this side is opposite the right angle, making the other two sides what? Regular, normal, boring sides. Let's put in the letters. Here would be common x, here would be common y, and here would be common z. So this is opposite z. It seems to me that a regular side is missing. So we want to find the length of the regular side. So that's the blue formula, the one with the minus sign. Let's see if we can write the formula. So it's, um, it's almost like this one here. So the name of the regular side is y is equal to square root. Hypotenuse must come first if we're using this formula. The name of the hypotenuse is common z. Don't forget the square. Minus x squared. We don't know the length of y. That's the aim of the question. Z is, common z is, remember these letters here are common letters. Common z is 20. Minus value of x is 70. So we need to work this out, and when we get our answer, we will square it. So let's type in 20 squared minus 17 squared. I'm going to get 1, 1, 1. And we have to square root that answer. And when we square root 111, our answer that we will get for the length of this side 
it's going to be 10.54 if we round it off properly. I always like to go to two decimal places. So, now this is just the introduction to Pythagoras theorem. Most likely in an exam, the question is, will not come this easily. This is just the basics. So, in my next video, I uh, also this um, video will have a worksheet um, on the website, right? So you can check the website and look for the worksheet and make sure and do the worksheet before you go to the next video because you need to understand the basics here perfectly before you actually start like past paper type questions, which will be the, which which is what I'll be focusing on my next video. So. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure to do the worksheet. And of course, if you're from Trinidad and Tobago and you're interested in extra lessons for any subject, check the website below for details. Have a good day.